Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm here with Serge Ramily. Thank you, Serge, for uh, taking your time to uh, do a little talk. We're going to talk about gear. Yes. Because we just went to uh, to Provence to take some amazing photos of the, what do you, what they call lavender? The in, lavender. In, yeah, the lavender, lavender fields. Yeah. And uh, I saw that you had a new camera. That's right. I bought on a complete uh, last minute idea. I got a, there, there was an amazing promotion from Fuji on the GFX50R. It's a medium format camera, and the reason I bought it is because I did a photo shoot with Alex Zahor. Hello, Alex, if you're watching this, he's an amazing interior design photographer from Los Angeles, and he just bought the camera because he's getting into really like very high end art, you know, architecture, architecture, mm -hmm. architecture, yeah, yeah architecture. So I never had to pronounce it in English. It's hard, <laughs> yeah, and um, like really high end, and he wanted to shoot medium format, and so we did a shoot together uh, on the Griffiths Park, and so. It's what, what I call the Terminator view, where you have the observatory as a foreground and you got downtown as a background. And he was shooting medium format with the Fuji. I had the Sony 7 R3. And then we compared the raw files and I could not believe the quality. Like downtown for me was like pretty messy. And him, you could like literally see somebody like having a tooth issue, you know, at the window. On that. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it was much sharper. But that's the thing. Every Every reviews that I've seen where they compare the two side by side, I looked at the Sony, I'm like, yeah, it's fine, it's sharp, it's really sharp. And I look at the Fuji, and I'm like, oh wow, yeah, that it looks soft, like and, the Sony and, looks soft. Yeah, and the way they handle colors is much is different. Like for example, we did this shoot. I don't know if you have the video. Uh, the last sunrise we did when the sun was coming out in the lavender field, I took a lot of Sony and and Fuji photos, and just the way the lavender looks on the Fuji just looks much better. It, well, to be honest. On the whole shoot we did, I, I ended up having 10 hero shot uh, out of 500 and seven of them were Fuji photos and only three with Sony. And I'm a big Sony fan. I'm not being sponsored by Fuji. Uh, I'm not being sponsored by Sony, although I would love to be sponsored by either <laughs> one of them. So if you work at Sony or work at Fuji, call me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. Yeah, I remember I, I remember you telling me that the first the first night you're like, I didn't choose one Sony photo, it was all Fuji. Yeah. And then the because we stayed there for two days and then eventually you got some Sony ones. Yeah, I, I mean I love the Sony. Yeah. I've done seven books with the Sony's. I think it's you know uh, the Fuji has some really done side. It's not stabilized, which is like a lot of my photos were blurry, so you really have to be on a tripod, you know, as soon as the light is you and also the dynamic range is smaller. Like uh, the Sony I know we have a whole discussion on this, mm -hmm. but I really see at least one f-stop of dynamic range less with a Fuji than Sony. So if your highlights are a little overexposed, you're burned. You, you don't get anything back. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the the Fuji uh, GFX50 it doesn't have the X trend sensor that all the Fuji you know, XT3 had. That has crazy, crazy. I remember taking, being able to recover so much of the highlights with my old, I think the XT1 back then. And um, you couldn't do that with the Fuji. You could bring the shadows up though, way yeah. more than the yeah. Sony though. So All you have to do is expose the highlights. So you, all mm -hmm. my photos look super dark, uh, especially you know when golden hour comes. You really have to expose the sky, so they look super dark. Then you open the shadows. It's great. Uh, uh, with the Sony, I don't have that issue. I can go at least. I have to go at least one stop less mm -hmm. with the Fuji to get the equivalent of what I'm getting with the Sony. But once you know this, and I learned this is a hard way, color science is unbelievable. Yeah, I did notice that. Here's the weird thing. On every single test that I've seen online, dynamic range seems to be the same with the Sony a7R 3 that we're using. Except when you're hitting the 1000 ISO, then the GFX 50R takes over and just wins it hands down. So my guess is just the Sony has more information in the highlights and the GFX 50R has more information in the shadows. And that's it. I just thought it was it would be good for portraiture because uh, I kept seeing, you know, the, the, the Fuji colors for the skin tone is amazing and I have witnessed that. I wasn't sure it was gonna, you know, also show on the on the, on the the landscape, but apparently, yeah, it yeah. really does. Well, I'm gonna give you the raw files, Sony and yeah. Fuji, and show them. For sure, yeah, I'll, I'll pop up all the all the stuff that we're talking about, I'll just give you a little. Yeah, so little... you can see, you can see like at 100% the difference and the color science behind it, it's quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is, Serge's tripod died, so I had to give him this tiny little tripod yeah, that was on bad. his massive medium format. And uh, it's, a, it's a great tripod, it just doesn't go up that much, it yeah. doesn't have a center And, and that, that was a big problem, because we need... In, I discovered something about the lavender field, is you need to be high to... If you get too close to the lavender, they're very blurry and they, they look confused. Mm -hmm. When you're higher up and you're looking down, they look like more 
Oh, it's just it's not yeah, nicer. It, you really and you did. Yeah, I did see a lot of people having massive tripods yeah. and that could go really high. Yeah, and we were both just envying them because we knew yeah. we couldn't really get super high. And um, talking about that, Siri just sent me this little marvel of a tripod, and um, it's the Traveler 7C. And I had to do a review for it, but Serge is gonna steal it. Yeah, because, I, I, um, I mean, honestly, this. This tripod is a dream tripod. I mean, like if I had a dream of a tripod, this is it. It's very light. Uh, it only has three things. I hate when there's four because it takes forever to do three, but it takes even more forever to do four. Like I like to go fast, you know. Um, it's so cheap. It's like 140 euros. Yeah, I think it. The, uh, all my tripods are like around a thousand dollar. I don't think it's as well built as Gizzo or really right stuff. Not at all. Obviously. I don't like. I don't like the the bull head. I'm just gonna get rid of my bull head. And I'm gonna put the BH20 from Really Right Stuff on it. Uh, but you're saving my summer because I was gonna go and buy another one, and this one is just perfect. And um, the thing, my problem with tripod is, I, and I kill them all by going. I, I do a lot of um, seascape mm -hmm. where I'm really in the water, and I've already killed two gizzos with seawater. Uh, we'll see how this one holds up to seawater. Yeah. Did you have a waterproof one? So I'll, yeah. I'll ask them if. Maybe they can send you one. I, I need a waterproof <laughs> one. Yeah, or well, I need to find a system to protect my tripod because uh, sea salt kills tripods. They do have, I think they do have like one of those, you know, uh, uh, sleeves. Uh, like yeah, sleeves. I even built some, but then I forget you them. Do? And then, yeah. you know, I'm not patient. Yeah, I'm, I'm an impatient man. Like I see water, I just rah, put the tripod and take the shot. What would you say to someone who wants to start photography, doesn't have, you know, if you let's say you have a thousand dollars and you want to start photography. If I had a thousand dollars, I would... Uh, I would either what brand would you go for? Fuji or Sony. Okay. What? Or, or Canon. I don't know. Because I, I, I started with the Canon T2i, uh, or the Canon EOS 350. Uh, and uh, it's, um, it's a great camera to start with. It's just like, it looks so plastic to me. And I don't like the look, but mm -hmm. I love the color and science of Canon. I think Canon colors are amazing. I don't like Sony colors. I love Fuji. I love Canon. I don't like Nikon colors for some reason. Okay. I, uh, it's just, I've retouched... You see, every Wednesday I do a show where I retouch other people's photos. Mm -hmm. So I've retouched hundreds of Sonys and Canons Different and Nikon. Things. And I always come to uh, love the Canon, the Sony and the Fuji for some reason. Awesome. More than others. I would either like find an XT, like a Fuji entry price, like XT1, XT2 or something. I think XT1 is a bit dated because it's only like 16 megapixels. I think the XT2 is 24 megapixels. Yeah, so maybe with that. How, well, how much is that one? I think you can find it. I don't think you can find it new, but it's around a thousand. I think you can find it for a thousand. Yeah. The thing is with Fuji, I've done like a you know a side by side on all the brands with all this you know the five kit lenses, right? You know, super wide tele, and uh, Nikon, Canon, or way lower. It was like a thousand four hundred for crop sensor, mm -hmm. like for five lenses, super wide. You know, like one of those a Traveler one. You know, the eighteen to two hundred. Yeah. And uh, a macro lens and also a portrait, and it was about. 1400 for Nikon and Canon. So you can get all these lens with Canon, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Nikon, and also Canon mirrorless, uh, the, the crop, not full frame. Got it. Full frame. And uh, Fuji was 3000. Sony was around there too. Yeah, that's the problem. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm guessing you read the best bet today. If I I think I would go with Canon, to be honest, because okay. you buy a Canon with a 1740 and a, and, and, the, and the, the 51.8, that's, that's like $600. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and then you just, and you can do portrait with a 50 and you can do landscape with a 1740. Yeah, that's true. And they also have a new, Nikon and Canon just came up with a very wide, you know, the 10 to 24 around mm -hmm. for less than $300 each. There uh, you go. For Nikon or Canon so yeah, I mean, honestly, cameras, they're all great today. Uh, you know, they, they hold out their plus and minus, but it's not about the camera because it's about post-processing. It's about composition. It's about you know shooting at the right time. It's about telling a story. That's what you need to concentrate on. I mean, honestly, I know people making a fortune with iPhones, photography on, on you know Very true. On, on Instagram. So, uh, but Canon, I would say, yeah, you're right. Canon, pro Canon is probably the best bet if you only have a thousand dollar. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I would go with Nikon just because um, they have great dynamic range. Like yeah, they have true. the the Nikon 7200 has. I think 14.5 stops of dynamic that's range. That. You can find it for a thousand. It's like a four or five yeah. year old lens. That's the only reason why I would go with that. Yeah. But you're right. Colors is very important too. Colors is important, but also the quality of the pixel. That's, I mean, I was going to buy, I had a choice to get the Sony 7R4, which is a 61 million camera versus a Fuji, which is only a 50 million. 
But the reason I went there is I, uh, I spoke to a few professionals is because when you have such a big sensor that like the Fuji, the, each pixel is somehow better. You know, it's like the, the well, they're bigger first of all because the sensors yeah. are bigger. Yeah, and mm. so the quality is just like wow. You know, very true, very true. And, and isn't it? Don't they shoot like sixteen bits versus fourteen bits or no? Are no, you still I, I, bits? it's still fourteen bits. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Only the uh, the big the Hasselblad or no the GFX one hundred which. Oh. It's ten thousand dollars. It's stabilized. It's a hundred megapixel and it's sixteen bit, but it's ten thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money yet. I have a feeling that if you're if you're gonna keep with the Fuji, in a few years you'll be with the. Well, what I'm hoping is that Fuji contacts me and gives me the so I can promote it to one million people. If you're working at Fuji, contact me. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll put also put a link on the description below so you can check out his website, Serge Ramirez's website. I mean, if you want to do anything. Uh, that concerns the landscape or cityscape or hotel photography. I mean, he's the guy to go to. So check his website out. Can you give me like, tell, tell them who inspires you today? My number one inspiration has always been for the last two years, Eric Almas. Uh, he's a Norwegian a photographer living in San Francisco. He's been voted best commercial photographer for the last at least two years in a row that I know of. And every time I lack of inspiration or I lack of like energy of doing photos, I look at his website, I'm like, I am still so far away from that quality. So he's like, uh, you know, he's the person I want to grow up to. I just love everything about his photos, like everything. It's very, it's, he, he has achieved the ultimacy of natural drama. So it's very dramatic, it's super photoshopped, but it looks super natural and I, it's incredible. I think that's always what, you know, like we always talk about that, it's what we're looking for. We want. We don't want someone to look at a photo and be like, "Oh my God, this is retouched." It looks amazing, but it's retouched. You want someone to be like, "How did like where did he go to take that photo?" Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, the problem I think that we have today, and that's the main problem you guys have got to focus on, is there's so many software out there where with one click you can get a you know change the sky or get all the details out or get this incredible, you know, luminar. <laughs> Lumi no, luminar. Yeah, luminar, for example, I, which. You know, but it's like a, it's like a toy, so don't overuse them. Mm -hmm. And what I see people struggling the most today, they, they everybody can get this crazy HDRs or this, is how to make it dramatic but natural. So I'm gonna make a T-shirt called Dramatic Natural. <laughs> it's my new brand, and that's what I try to teach people. Check out my YouTube channel. That's what I try to teach on a weekly basis. Awesome. Thank you, Serge, and uh, I'll see you maybe around Paris some more before yes. you go. Thank you. You're going on a crazy trip. And yes. And we'll follow you on Instagram too, uh, I guess. Yeah, check me out on at photo Serge on Instagram. I'm going to do daily uh, uh, vlogging or stories because I'm going to be all over Europe for the next two months. Sweet. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you did enjoy this video. And let us know in the comments below uh, any questions, anything. Okay, thank you, guys. Peace.